and it's uh, 959. Blessed is 
the King, who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, verse 21. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had re reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and that were following were shouting, Blessed the Lord forgives all sins. Yeah. Hosanna. Oh, I, excuse me. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palms along his way. Let these branches be for us the signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over. When Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let, Let him be crucified. crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, Let, Let, him, him, Let him be crucified. crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole co cohort around him. They stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his hand, and they put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, the soldiers came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. And when the soldiers came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and then we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if God wants to. For this man said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. strange to come to church and not see any cars parked on Matheson, be able to have any parking place that I want to have. But as Sally said earlier, we are bonded together in the love of Christ. It has begun. Word spoke from this pulpit, if you recall, on March 1st, the first Sunday in Lent. And now this pandemic wilderness that we've all been walking together in continues with the beginning of Holy Week. It has begun. Back then, Sally asked all of us to be soulful observers. And so now I ask you to consider being a soulful observer as if you were there with Jesus at this time, his triumphal entrance to the Holy City. Observe and feel as if you don't know the rest of the story, or try to. It may help to draw on, hopefully, your real-time humility of participating in this pandemic and not knowing what's going to happen next. Many of the people back in real time, however, are caught up in the energy of hooray, hallelujah for Jesus. Now we are going to have our earthly Messiah, our winner. One of the meanings of a palm branch is that it is a symbol of triumph and victory. Let's go back just a little bit to the transfiguration. Now, if Jesus had said during the transfiguration event, you know what, Peter, you're right. Let's just stay here. We've made it. Go ahead and take your power nap. Now, I, I make no judgments on Peter. None at all. If I have to sleep, my body says sleep. He was just a guy. He couldn't help himself. He, you know, maybe if Moses and Elijah were there, though, I might make an exception. If there was ever a time when Peter would have thought to himself, oh yes, finally everyone will now listen to me and see life my way, this was it. But I don't think Peter was that calculating. He does want this moment to last. It can't. Hence the desire to stay. Peter was certainly an observer. I'm not sure how soulful he was at that moment. Jesus knew it has begun his final days, and so he kept going forward to do his work of salvation and love, validated by Moses and Elijah. We know the prophet Zechariah wrote, Behold, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious. He is humble, riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. Isn't this a bit conflicted? Humility and victory. Let's pause for a moment and continue with the hallelujah fist in the air. Yay, Jesus is on our side. That energy, 
and consider Jesus' ride of humble victory. If we were to assign an emoji to this moment, what would it be, victory or humility? We don't know who was shouting hallelujah and who soon would be shouting crucify him, as we just heard. Surely there were some. Which do you think he would be? We all love winners. He wasn't the political savior most wanted in their Messiah in that moment. How about a miracle or two, Mr. Miracle Man Jesus? People that are soulful observers, they just don't get much done. How about Martin Luther King? How about Anne Frank? How about Gandhi? These were people who observed, and they got a lot done, like Jesus. We know he said very little in Scripture. He was a doer, however, and he was very much so a soulful observer. Jesus rode a donkey as an example of humility. That's why he was born in a manger. Through lowering himself, he was exalted. Through emptying, he was filled. We will see his life mission in the next few days with stark, brutal reality and bloody truth. And so he, we continue forward, not humiliated by this pandemic or illness or even death, but as soulful observers. And so we have the choice to love others as he loves us or not. Now think about this one. You know, I'm the most judgmental person of judgmental people you will ever meet. I want you to think about someone that you just don't think is going to make it to heaven. <laughs> think about that person. You know, Carl Rogers coined the, the term unconditional positive regard. That person deserves that at a human level, but at a faithful level, you need to, I need to, because I have a few too, by the way, observe them soulfully, not with judgment that they're not going to make it, because they are. Jesus loves them. Lately, in this humbling pandemic, when that happens, the image of the cross comes to mind. And I'm called again to be a soulful observer. And not respond, just observe, and believe that Jesus is with us. I, I, I can't get off this one, because I think, you know, pre-pandemic we were really challenged to be soulful observers. So come on, they just don't get much done. Just ask Martha. We've got to be doers. Jesus had a lot of work to do yet in the days ahead. We know what that was and is, and so we follow, humbled by life, humbled by this pandemic. And so it has begun for us as well. And every day now, we can go forward with humble confidence. Jesus shows us that's not a conflicted statement. I'm going to share a couple of real-time examples of humble confidence in a bit. One is humble confidence. The other is arrogance, learning humility. If we were there observing him riding that donkey, if we escaped our own desires to finally be right and raise our fists in victory and have everyone understand life my way, if we were soulful observers, we might not be in hallelujah frenzy mode, but rather connect our hearts and our brains and follow his lead with his humility, thus becoming our humility. With the knowledge that we may not know what's coming, but we know what we must do. We must keep going forward. It has begun, so we follow Jesus today and now to the bloody cross with humble confidence and so many other valid human emotions that are just too many to name and list right now. Think about a time in your life where life humbled you. Did you rise up afterwards with arrogance and say, now I'm going to show them, or did you continue on simply knowing truthfully what you can do and what you can't do. Jesus knew now what he could and must do. The gift of humble confidence, in other words, your peace,
comes from knowing what you must do and why you must do it. We all have many humbling times in our lives. After my partner died, I would stand in front of the mirror and I would just sob. That was all I could do. It was the most honest I've ever been in my life to that point. And so I went forward after Amanda died and I got led, I believe, by God, I didn't really know it, to this church, St. Paul's. I had given up on the church and her conflictedness and with self-righteousness left in a huff. I walked into this church one day and started to realize little by little that Jesus had been with me during the whole wilderness of death's reality in my life. I sat in that back pew and I still do, I like it back there. But I listened and I observed, I heard wonderful words and preaching and beautiful music. And little by little, I started to trust in Christ's real presence now. In Sally's office one day, I wept and I shared my story. Amanda was my spiritual giant. She had become a powerful spokeswoman in AA. She knew me as no other human knew me. When she died, I thought and felt at my core that I was alone and I was humbled daily for years and thankfully still am. I have been welcomed in this community of Christ back in word and sacrament and liturgy and music and in service. I now know I wasn't alone in that death wilderness and never will be. Jesus goes with me. He goes with each one of us to the cross. I am an outreach worker for Reach for Home and a member of this parish, a soulful observer and follower of Jesus. As all of you know, that branch of this parish ministry started here. Thank you so much for the winter shelters. Thank you so much for the shower ministries. Thank you, Sally, for tending to one of our participants before this worship service started. Thank you for your support. Our team at Reach for Home has grown and we have bonded as a result of this pandemic. We just need to go out there and feed and keep our participants safe. Whenever I work in that capacity, I go out humbled. If I'm not, it comes really quickly when I'm out there. I don't have a lot of answers to solve once and for all. These parishioners that are homeless, these people that Jesus loves and died for. But I do know I have to go out there in humility because they will see it right away. If I were to have even the attitude of you're in this situation because of your choices. Or if I feigned concern, I feel so badly for you. They, they, they know that. They detect it quickly. One of the things we have to do is develop a basic trust with the people that we're serving. I go out humbly and always with the hope that this is the beginning to continue forward with them. It doesn't matter if they proclaim faith in Christ or not. And you know what? Jesus loved those people that were shouting, crucify him. I want to share with you an example, a real-time example of humble confidence that I was blessed to experience while working out in the field with our field nurse, uh, Jackie. She had made contact with Squeaks Van Gogh, is her name, on the Joe Rodota Trail, and somehow or another she and her boyfriend and her dog made it up to North County, and uh, we discovered them under an overpass. We were supposed to take Squeaks to an appointment, a medical appointment one day, and she wasn't there, but she did leave this note that we found subsequently. Um, she and Jackie bonded 
at a very powerful level. As a mom, as a woman, as a daughter, as a kind heart, and as a nurse. She allowed us to be part of her life for a couple, a couple of weeks. And she left this little note, and it's got a map on how to find them, and it's got a warning about thistles and how to avoid them. She cared about us, and she wanted to participate with us. She said, I hope to see you again. I hope to get to this appointment. But if I don't, regardless, thank you for everything, especially restoring my faith in humanity. Much love, Squeaks. We were able to contact her mother in Georgia and Beach for Home got her a ticket to go back home and to be with someone that loved her. And so from that young pregnant woman's heart, we heard and learned again why we should be alive, why we should care, why we should act, and why we should do this from a position of humility, not arrogant power of, I know what to do, and so now I'm going to tell you what to do. No, we hold that space in the presence of Christ with that unconditional positive regard. I want to leave you now, you soulful observers, with a beautiful but perhaps scary and necessary understanding of what we are doing this Holy Week, now that it has begun, now that it continues. Sally shared this poem, Once Upon a Time, and when I heard it, then I cried, and I penned it on a little cork board I have. I don't look at it often, because every time I read it, I cry, I may or may not now, I don't know. But this poem is written by Yehuda Halevi, a 12th century Spanish Jewish poet, physician, and philosopher. It's called Tis a Fearful Thing. Tis a fearful thing to love what death can touch. A fearful thing to love, to hope, to dream, to be, to be. And oh, to lose a thing for fools, this, and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your words was gift to me. To remember this brings painful joy. It is a human thing, love, a holy thing, to love what death has touched. Remember where we have come from. This is my beloved son, listen to him. Remember at our very best we are dust, and to dust we shall return. That we don't have to win in the sense of being better than others. We don't have to be on the winning hallelujah side. We are on the love of Jesus side. Remember that it has begun. Walk with Jesus to the cross this week. Pay attention as a soulful observer of Jesus and self. I believe when it's finished, we will have our hearts cleared for more service in his name until death parts us. Normalcy? Can it ever return? It can't. It has begun. We walk now with Jesus until it is finished. Let us join together in prayer, and in response to Lord, in your mercy, after each bidding, please respond, hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for presiding Bishop Michael, for our own Bishop Megan, and for her staff, working to support congregations throughout this diocese. We pray for all ministers and people of your church, most especially for our sisters and brothers, all members and friends of St. Paul's. We thank you for holding us together as one body in Christ 
wherever we find ourselves today. In these trying times, we pray you open our eyes to see new pathways for the ministries with which you have entrusted us. In our diocesan cycle of prayers, we remember Grace Church St. Helena and Holy Trinity Ukiah. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I ask your prayers for peace and for goodwill among nations, that where there is strife, we may learn to hold common good above self-interest. We pray you guide the leadership of this and every nation for the well-being of all people. And we pray for all elected officials, especially Donald, Gavin, Michael, James, and Leah, that they will act with wisdom and resolve for the well-being of our communities. We pray for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the staff, volunteers, and clients of Reach for Home, Healdsburg Shared Ministries, and our own shower ministry, especially Beth and Jane, who are working to keep it going in these stressful times. We pray for all who have been commended to our prayers for support or healing. Doris, Orville, Yvette, Catalina, Morris, Jennifer, Wes, Krista, David, Richard, Elizabeth, Emily, Jane, Leah, Michael, Selah, Tom, William, Joyce, Alicia, Katie, Christopher, Joan, Marion, Alan, Grace, Barbara, Roger, John, and those that we now name silently or loud. Comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those around the world who are ill from the coronavirus, and we pray for the medical professionals caring for them. For them. We thank you for their skill and dedication, and we pray you give them courage and fortitude in these difficult times. We pray for teachers and parents who have moved to homeschooling and their children. Give them patience and perseverance. We pray for people in countries whose economies and medical infrastructure are especially hard hit by this pandemic. We pray for workers and business owners everywhere who are facing economic hardship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> In the midst of these troubling times, we thank you for uniting us together within Christ's body and for your assurance that nothing can separate us because of your love for us all. We pray we are able to gather soon in one another's company. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Steve Reese and Johnny O'Hagan, and others that we name now. We pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially Shelley and David Rust, who have given the altar flowers in thanksgiving for the well-being of our St. Paul's Church family. We pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us grace, good Lord, to strive through our own efforts for these things we ask of you. In your love, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace.
Peace be with you. Peace be with all of you. Um, you may be seated. <laughs> be comfortable again. Recline in those recliners, as Jim said. <laughs> um, I uh, want to thank you all for finding this uh, this service today. It is a blessing to all be together. Um, again, I have said it, but it always bears repeating. We are separated, we are isolated in our own homes, but we need not be isolated. Use this as a time to stay in touch with your sisters and brothers here at St. Paul's Church. If you have any prayer concern whatsoever, or if you have a need, uh, grocery delivery, um, call your vestry flock leader, call me personally, the office, uh, we are in the office. We've moved the shower ministry to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because um, it spreads it out across the week and we're free from all other constraints on our parish hall because no one else is meeting there. So we're doing three more or less full days of showers. Um, and uh, so we're, we're there to open the, uh, to answer the, the phone in the office those days and a few other times, but it's probably safer to send an email to the office account, call me directly, my cell number and email are in the bulletin, call your best reader, call each other, let's just chat. It's a good thing for us to do right now. Um, I wanna thank Jim McGammon, that was a beautiful sermon. It was a beautiful sermon and it was a, a, a holy way to begin Holy Week, thank you. Um, so I mentioned that our showers are ongoing. Uh, we have done over 240, over, no, excuse me, 424. We've had 424 showers in three months. That's a little over 140 per month in the first few months of the year. Um, that is a service that is needed now more than ever. And I am terribly grateful to Jane and Beth for figuring out how to do that safely. Um, if you would like to make donations of socks or anything else for the shower ministry, please call the office or send an email to the office about arranging how to do that so they don't just get left outside the church. Um, and I mentioned prayer concerns. Do keep those coming. One of the blessings of this time is we have a very vibrant prayer life. Um, maybe you've tuned in. We're doing a morning devotion um, Monday through Friday another time for us to pray out loud for one another, and that has been um, a great blessing. You can find this service and all of our services on live stream and the, uh, on the back page of the bulletin or on our website. The bulletin is on our website. You can find information about how to get on all of our services. Live stream is available on Facebook, on YouTube and our website and Facebook, you can watch them all after the live stream. Um, I also want to call your attention to our Holy Week schedule. Um, we have uh, the regular schedule Monday, Thursday at 6.30 p.m., Good Friday at noon, Stations of the Cross at 6 p.m. on Good Friday. Um, for the Great Vigil of Easter, we are directing everyone, and I will be watching myself, I'm sure we all will, be watching the Great Vigil at the Trinity Cathedral in Sacramento, um, and that's at 7.30 p.m., and the way to log on is mentioned in the bulletin, and then Easter Sunday, um, which I'm actually looking forward to. We're going to have a beautiful liturgy. Um, so uh, that is our Holy Week schedule. Uh, one of the things that we are adding are birthday prayers. Um, normally, you know, we would have birthday prayers for birthdays and anniversaries during our service. And um, so uh, I'm going to grab my Book of Common Prayer, and we're going to pray for uh, birthdays this week. We included last week and this week in our birthday prayers. Uh, we have Victor Salee, Paul Blanchard, and Jim Gibney both had birthdays last week. Um, my father-in-law, Robert Hubble, had a birthday last week. James Gore, Jimmy Gore, had a birthday. Andy Hiles, Allison Doran, and Angela Gross. Let me grab my Book of Common Prayer. And let us pray for all those whom I just named for their birthday. 
birthday. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I think uh, that is all of the announcements, save one. Um, I ask that you continue your financial support of St. Paul's Church. Um, again, there's information for that on our website and in this bulletin. You can offer online through our website, um, either through PayPal or through just a regular credit card donation. You don't have to do it through PayPal. Um, also, the mail is still working. Drop a check in the mail and that would be lovely. Um, thank you for that. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering to God.
us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his, his death, death, we proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await, await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you have have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen. Oh.